They took the best everything possible and added more. Hey guys, Ash here. This is the ROG Phone 6 Pro. We all knew this was coming, right? When Asus abstained from jumping onto the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 bandwagon, we all knew a ROG with the next chip was coming and was coming pretty quick. Now this phone is, it's, it's really spectacular. Well, it brings a lot of very important upgrades, some things still remain unchanged. For example, the dimensions, the 6 Pro, it's the same height, the same width, the same thickness, and even pretty much the same weight as its predecessor. So it's still a massive phone. It's got that huge uninterrupted 6.8 inch display, Full HD Plus AMOLED, but this time the refresh and touch sampling are both higher, 165 and 720 Hz respectively. The battery capacity is unchanged at 6000 mAh. It's a split cell and this phone can support up to 65 watts USB power delivery charging. The stereo speakers are still amongst the loudest I've come across on a smartphone. The headphone jack remains, the RAM and storage text also unchanged, LPDDR5 and UFS 3.1, which, beat it up, is one of two differences between the ROG Phone 6 and the 6 Pro. So the 6 gets 12 to 56, while the Pro is 18 512, which I'm super excited about. I mean, just personally, I've been using either the ROG Phone 5 or the 5S alongside the Kunai Gamepad as my go-to for Android gaming ever since the ROG 5 launched, and my 5S has only 128 gigs of storage. So the 512 gigs on this, especially given all the ROMs I'm gonna be storing on it for emulation, it's pretty awesome. Anyway, sorry, got carried away. The other change is with this back. The ROG Phone 6 is available in both black and white. Asus calls it Phantom Black and Storm White. Well, the Pro is only available in white. Also, the Pro gets this one and a half inch ROG Vision PMOLED display. Full color, not monochrome this time. So these are the only two differences between the regular and the Pro versions. So for the rest of this video, I'll be using ROG Phone 6 and 6 Pro interchangeably because everything else is identical. Now the ROG Vision display, you can access the settings for this from the Armory Crate app and it offers a lot of granular customization. You can set up different animations for when a call comes in, say you're playing a game, charging the phone, you get the picture. For each of these scenarios, you can select different animations from presets Asus offers or even create your own like I've done here. Either you could import a picture and animate it the way you see fit or have some text looping. It adds a whole new level of cosmetic customization that you, you don't usually find on other phones. Now, barring this, the rest of this back, it's typically ROG. It's very typically ROG. It's got these crazy lines with a lot of text all over. The Republic of Gamers branding, Join the Revolution, 06 for the ROG 6, for those who dare, dare to play, 8K Ultra HD. This camera array, it's bigger this time around. And that's a very important change because given the identical form factor, this is what stops you from using some of the ROG Phone 5 accessories with this phone. Like for example, the Kunai gamepad. I really hope Asus sells the back cover alone for Kunai because the controller part hasn't really changed. Anyway, coming back, the phone feels very solid and familiar to use in hand. I do like these little blue accents to the back here and there, especially around the primary sensor, the power key and the SIM tray. Kind of makes it all come together quite nicely. Asus also has an IPX4 rating for this, which is a fancy way of saying some splashes shouldn't have any effect. Well, that's cool. What really sets the ROG Phone 6 apart from the competition is its superior internal cooling. Asus have done really well here. Of course, it scores high on benchmarks. That was expected. What is really impressive is that even after a 15 minute CPU throttle test, the ROG Phone 6 retained 90% of its performance. With something GPU intense, like say the 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, where we've commonly seen current gen phones get stability scores between 50 to 60%, the ROG Phone 6 had almost 90. Now this is before you factor in the new Aeroactive cooler, cause with that on, the stability went up to 97%. That's 20 loops of this running, and the difference between loop one and loop 20 being almost negligible. This Aeroactive Cooler 6, it now has a Peltier cooling chip inside, which puts it at a whole new level with cooling. Asus claims you can expect up to 25 degrees of temperature drops, uh, and they really aren't kidding. Uh, just see this for yourself. This is thermal camera footage of the ROG Phone 6 running a 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test with the Aeroactive Cooler on. See how this spot on the screen is at 46 degrees? Now let's turn it around and let's remove the cooler and see how the same spot is 29 degrees. It starts rising immediately because the benchmark was still running. Now this is the ROG Phone 6 three minutes later without the cooler, the same spot, it's at 46 something degrees. 
So that's a 17 degree difference in just three minutes. That's how much of an impact the aeroactive cooler was having on the temperatures. BTW, what you just saw was the aeroactive cooler running off the phone's battery, but it doesn't always have to. There are three different settings for it. We have cool, frosty, and frozen. For frozen, you need to have the charger plugged in, and that will help keep the phone even cooler. Now remember, to push things even further, just like we've seen on the ROG Phone 5, you can set the battery to not actually charge and have the phone run off a power source directly. This would effectively stop the battery from generating any heat that it would usually do whilst charging. You can do this from Game Genie, which has been revamped this time. You trigger it by swiping from one of the top corners and it pops up from the bottom. And from here, you can swap performance profiles, turn off notifications, adjust display settings, set up air triggers, a whole lot more. And gaming, even without an aeroactive cooler, the experience was flawless, very, very smooth. I honestly can't wait to be done working on this video so I can start spending more time with this phone, gaming on it actually. Anyways, with the air triggers, very few brands offer something like this, but even those who do, don't offer the ridiculous level of functionality that Asus does. Here's a practical example. With Genshin Impact, I have camera control mapped to the right, uh, right air trigger, so I get to control one axis by sliding, tap and I can rush. With the left trigger, tap to attacks, slide right to jump, slide left to special. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many ways in which the air triggers here can be used. On top of that, there's gyro control and the aeroactive cooler adds four more buttons to be mapped. Now, last gen, the aeroactive cooler added two extra keys. This has two more and they've nailed ergonomics. I love how the placement is similar to bumpers you find on regular controllers. Now, if there is one negative with this cooler, it's the fact that unlike the last gen, this one does not have a headphone jack. So you can't run your wired headphones through the center. The phone itself does have a headphone jack still. So you can use that, though that becomes an issue if you were to be using the phone with a Kunai gamepad as that covers the top and the bottom. Now with software, we are running on Android 12 and as always, Asus lets you choose between stock and gamery aesthetics. There's not much in the way of bloat, but there are a lot of features. A ton of equalizer options for audio, you can tweak it any way you want. You can have double tapping the back trigger certain actions. I have set it to turn the flashlight on and off. Even with display, you get different presets and even a custom option if you want to still fine tune things further. Talking about the display, this is not a LTPO panel, but ASUS does provide you preset options to switch between 60, 90, 120, 144, and 165 Hz. Now, cameras have generally been an afterthought on gaming phones, but my initial impressions with this setup here, it's been mostly positive. We get a 50 megapixel primary. This is the Sony IMX766, which we've seen on other flagships like the Oppo Find X5 Pro, and the images, they turned out quite nicely. Detailed shots with nice contrast and good dynamic range. The ultra wide is a 13 megapixel f2.2 with a 125 degree field of view. And the third sensor is just a 5 megapixel macro to make up the numbers. With video, you can shoot at up to 8K uh, at uh, 24 FPS. And the footage, it was very crisp and detailed, but obviously the lack of OIS does hurt you. For selfies, Asus has gone with yet another Sony sensor, the IMX663. That's a 12 megapixel sensor paired with an f2.45 lens. As you can see, the results, not bad, not bad at all. Guys, now before we wrap, let's quickly cut through the unboxing. What you actually get in the box. So this is what Asus sent me. There's also a couple of extras, but before we get to that, let's go ahead and open up the ROG Phone 6 Pro's box. It looks pretty unique, but also familiar in a very Asus ROG kind of way. Let's now open it up. We are first greeted by the ROG Phone 6 Pro, which I will get back to in a quick minute. We then have a black insert, opening it up. Here's a ROG branded SIM ejector tool, a user guide, the ROG Phone 6 Pro's Aero case, which is followed by the charger, only 30 watts in the box, though it can support up to 65. And then we finally have a USB Type-C to Type-C cable. That's pretty much it for the box contents. This we will talk about in a minute. Asus have also sent me a screen protector, though I highly doubt with Gorilla Glass Victus you're gonna need to use a screen protector unless you're afraid of accidentally dropping your phone. Because with something like Victus, you aren't really gonna be seeing any scratches with regular use. So this is pretty much your stock tempered glass that's gonna cover the entirety of the front. They also sent me a Guardian light case. Actually looks pretty sweet. It's gonna let that design really shine through, though on the flip side, you can't use the aeroactive cooler with it. Now, for the start of the show, the ROG Phone 6 Pro. Ah, 
Of course, it is not an ROG unboxing without some kind of Easter egg, right? The card you saw earlier, it unlocks a little mini game that kind of gets you familiar with air triggers. And they even talk about the Aeroactive cooler there. Pretty neat. So that's it for my unboxing and also first impressions about the ROG Phone 6 Pro. What do you guys think of this phone? Leave a comment down below. And thanks for watching this video. Like if you like it, dislike it if you don't, and subscribe if you haven't yet. Until next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4E Tech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.